April showers bring May flowers. I think we're going to have a lot of flowers this year. I want to start today by sharing something that has personally blessed me. You know, it was only a few weeks ago we had people in our congregation who helped us in coming up with various ways and ideas that we can minister to the community at large. And uh, in fact, the charge that I gave many of you just a few weeks back was let's not let our pandemic go to waste. Well, God has raised up many of you to help us by being a liaison for our church in determining with these different people and organizations within our community how we can best serve them and work alongside them. So we've come up with people that are going to help us with Tree of Life, hospitals and first responders, Town of Percival needs, uh, the Fusion Ministry. That's one in particular that helps out um, people that are dealing with foster homes and foster children. Uh, the Loudoun Abused Women's Shelter, and Mobile Hope of Loudoun, which is a ministry towards the disadvantaged youth. So many different areas that we've got to be able to minister to. And we're able to hear from them because so many of you were willing to stand up, step up, and enable us to find out what actions it is that we need to take to be effective towards those that are in need. Now that's some of our local efforts. Our world missions team has also been working to spearhead an effort to contact every single one of our missionaries to try and find out from them what some of the needs are that they have so that maybe there are ways and things that we can do here through our church in order to help them out there. So I'm still a firm believer because I know God's word lets us know this. He wants to use his church to make a difference and to show the gospel and to show love as well as to speak the gospel and to speak about love, and you're responding. And that is just so encouraging. In fact, all of this fits right in with some of the things that we learned in this past Sunday's Sunday school class, doesn't it? When we were reminded of how Jesus prepared his disciples, that they were about to face a radical time of change. And Jesus' command to them, love one another. That's exactly what you're doing, Blue Ridge. You are loving those both in as well as outside of the church. We're going to do this on the first day that our church worship service is live. You might ask, why when we're live? Well, because the Lord's Supper isn't really meant to be only a family event. You know, over the years, we've seen and talked to many who have used this sort of at-home communion, and there's a problem with that because it leaves people ostracized from the church body. Well, we don't want to do that because the Lord's table isn't just a family event. A family meal does that. The Lord's Supper is a church-wide community event and a celebration, and it includes multiple families gathering together. So it's a church event. Well, one might say we're gathered. I mean, that's what we're doing on Sunday, even though it is electronically. And while that's true, I mean, there's something different about the worship service being whenever we do it on Sunday and the Lord's Supper being something we do all together. I think it's meant to be live, not individual and not pre-recorded, but a time where we are doing this at the same time. So we are going to have our first communion service at our first live stream service. And on top of that, um, we're probably going to be having communion more frequently than just the last Sunday of the month. And that's due to the fact that, you know, as a church, we're going to be slowly streaming in physically as well as some streaming in digitally. Uh, but we think it's going to be important that as new faces continue to show after we've had such a long time of being away, it's going to enable each one as they come back in to get back into all that that meal symbolizes and proclaims. Because the celebration, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? It's one that marks Jesus' physical absence, but his future presence. Well, we do that while we are present. So we hope to give you, I don't know, about 10 days notice maybe prior to performing community together. And that way you can get your supplies as you need them at that time. So... 
when we're at the church, we know we're going to have to work on provide elements that you need and the means that won't spread the COVID virus. We're working on that right now. So don't worry about that. Once you do come back, we're going to take good care of you. For now, let me just leave you with a verse that I read with somebody else today. And this comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 4. And I'm going to let this be both our prayer and admonition for us all this week. Where Peter says, The end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another. Because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaint. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Blue Ridge, until this Sunday, this is Pastor Jack Unplugged saying, may God continue to bless and encourage and strengthen you all.